Here's a short little video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop about the pressure gradient that you get across the part when you're using vacuum resin infusion. I've talked about this pressure gradient that you can get when you're doing vacuum resin infusion in a previous video, but I thought it'd be fun to actually demonstrate it. So I've set up a system here so that we can see this vacuum pressure gradient during a resin infusion that I'm doing for a new carbon fiber test sample. If you've seen some of my previous videos on doing these test samples, you're probably familiar with the test setup. Let me go over it really quick for those of you that may not be familiar with it. This blue line that you can see coming in from the bottom right hand corner is my vacuum line. It's hooked up to the vacuum pump. It's running into a resin trap. So if I pull any resin out of the part, excess resin, it'll fall in the trap and won't get into my vacuum pump. You can see a little vacuum gauge there on my resin trap. That's going to be measuring the vacuum that the vacuum pump is pulling. There's a rigid plastic line then running out of the resin trap and over into the outlet port of my vacuum bag. Then you can see my vacuum bag here with the insect screen flow mesh that I've been using. On the back side, there's another port and it's kind of hard to see because these lines are in the way, but I've got a T there right behind where that blue line is that has a vinyl connection running over to this vacuum gauge that's at the top left of your view. And that's going to be measuring the vacuum at the inlet. And then I've got a nice little clamp on my line running out of that T over into my resin pot. And we will pull epoxy out of that resin pot and into the part. Now let me bring up these vacuum gauges real quick so you can get a closer up view of them. Top one will be the vacuum gauge at the inlet. Bottom will be the vacuum gauge at the outlet where we're pulling the vacuum. The focus gets better on these gauges, so hang in there. Now at the moment, they're run down just a little bit. I had done a previous vacuum test about an hour and a half earlier. And so what you're seeing is the pressure that it has slowly leaked down to. And you'll also notice there's a difference in these vacuum gauges. That's because the vacuum gauge in my resin trap got damaged with a little bit of splashing of epoxy in it. So it reads just a little bit too high. At the moment, both the vacuum outlet and the inlet are really at the same pressure. So you're seeing that exit vacuum gauge reading about two inches of mercury too much. So to compare them, you'll have to subtract two inches of mercury. Now the vacuum pump is already running. So as I open up this valve here on the blue line, you'll see the vacuum gauges jump up to full vacuum. As I said before, the vacuum gauge you're seeing at the top is more accurate. So we do have about 28 inches of mercury of vacuum. The bottom one is reading about two inches of mercury too high. It should be reading 28. So it's got that two inches of mercury offset. I'm opening the clamp on the inlet line, which will allow the vacuum to draw the resin in my resin pot in through the line, down through the clamp, through the T, through my inlet port, and then down into the part. I never quite get it set perfect initially. I usually have to wait until the resin starts flowing in, try to gauge how fast it's coming in, and then adjust it. I'm going to skip ahead here about a minute while we're waiting for the resin to fill up the input port and then flow along the spiral line that's along the front edge of the part. You can see we now have epoxy that has filled up the spiral tube along the front edge of the part is now starting to flow along toward the outlet port. And it's only about, what, about an inch along so far. One of the things I've started doing recently is using the lines that are on the peel ply. There are little red lines about every inch or so. I have mark on top of my vacuum bag some lines where those lines on the peel ply are. And then I measure how much time on the clock goes by from the time the resin passes one line until it passes the next line. That gives me an idea what my flow rate is. If I ever get a part that fails because the flow rate was too fast, I can go back and look at this flow rate that I had and know that I need to go slower. I noticed that the flow rate here was a little bit lower than I'd like to have on my previous sample, so I cranked it up a quarter of a turn. Now is where we start getting to the interesting part of this demonstration. Watch the vacuum gauge up here in the upper left hand corner. As the epoxy starts flowing into the part and gets deeper and deeper, this vacuum will start dropping. That's showing the difference between the vacuum 
at that T at the inlet right after the clamp and the vacuum at the outlet. And as the resin flows across, that vacuum difference, that vacuum gradient will get greater and greater. Although the vacuum there at the inlet gets down to around 10 pounds per square inch, it is possible if you really open up that clamp on the input for that vacuum to go down basically to ambient pressure, zero PSI. When you get down that low, you can actually get in trouble and you can get a siphoning action if your resin pot is at a higher level than your part. It can siphon that resin straight down into your part and you can actually bulge and get this great big bubble of resin at the input because there's no pressure pressing on the vacuum bag. Let's speed this up for just a moment until the next interesting thing happens. Just for grins, I took the temperature of the resin pot and it's 81.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's crank up the speed on this a little bit since there really isn't much that happens as the resin is flowing across the part. One thing you will notice that's a little bit interesting is that there's kind of a scallop shape to this resin front as it flows across. And the reason for that is it's flowing a little bit easier along some lines than others. And the reason for that is that I'm using two layers of this insect screen as my flow media. In some places, the insect screen squares line up right on top of each other. In other places, they're not lined up at all. In the places where they are not lined up, that resin is able to flow under the top layer and over the bottom layer, up and down through the threads of the screen. But when they're lined up on top of each other, it almost completely blocks the resin flow going through there. And that's why it flows a little bit easier in some sections than others. And the reason that it's lined up like this is that the top screen has just a little bit of an angle relative to the bottom screen. If you're wondering why I'm using insect screen for my flow media, I'll put a link up here in the upper right hand corner that you can go to that'll go to a video that kind of explains the process that end up with me using this insect screen for my flow media. Although it's really a temporary solution, I'm looking for some better flow media. next little bit of interesting action. I cut off the flow of resin into the input port right before the flow front of the resin reaches the output port. It reduces the possibility that I'm going to have resin flowing through my output port up through the tube and into my resin trap. It's kind of a pain to clean out that resin trap once you get some resin into it. So I like to cut off that resin flow just a little bit early. Now here comes the next little bit that's interesting. Now that I have closed the clamp on the input and that resin continues to get pulled toward the output port, you'll notice that the vacuum on the input gauge up at the top left corner will start rising and eventually it'll come up and reach the vacuum at the output port. So that means that that vacuum gradient that we've had along there as we were pulling the resin in is now starting to close. That vacuum across the part is slowly getting closer and closer together until what finally meets.
that's about it for this demonstration. It takes quite a bit of time for that input vacuum level to reach the additional 3 inches of mercury to get to around 28 inches of mercury. I'm not going to make you uh, wait through all of that. If you'd like to see any more of this type of video, make sure you have subscribed to the channel and then click that little bell button to get notified whenever the Ultralight Airplane Workshop uploads videos.